Now, we have been starting a new series, and it was called Building the Championship Roster. And the first team we're selecting is the Miami Hurricanes. If you haven't seen episode one, click the link up right here. I'm going to have it there. Quarterbacks is the first one we evaluated. Once you're done with that, come and join us here. Now, episode two, running backs. So I'm breaking down, first of all, what you need on any team to have a national championship roster by position. Running back is the one we're out evaluating. So here's what I think you want to have at running back if you want to get a national championship. First thing is depth. You need more than one stellar back. Now, I say that, and I'll give an example. Take Clemson, who just won it. They had Feaster and Etienne. Both of those were very, very good running backs. The other ones, Alabama had three running backs with over 115 attempts. And Najee Harris, Josh Jacobs, Damian Harris. This is very, very crucial. I personally believe your running back room is as good as your depth. So the bottom guy there, how good is he? How athletic is he? Because injuries happen. Running backs take a huge toll during the season. You need to switch them out. They get tired. I think it's huge and pivotal to have good depth, especially at the running back room. The next one is kind of a done given. I don't want to talk about field vision view, cuts and all that, but just a general thing for any team. And it's, you got to protect the ball if you're a running back. You cannot have fumbles. Alabama lost seven fumbles for the whole year, which is good to be tied for top 30. Now, to keep just you guys in mind, there's the first place, fifth place, 15th place are like tied with a whole bunch of team. They're tied for 30th. I mean, if they had one less, they'd be in the top 15. So Alabama did pretty well. Notre Dame is actually a team that did really, really well and put, play, pushed the playoffs and then got obliterated. Um, they only had four fumbles, which is good to be tied in the top five. Very, very good, very solid. Clemson had nine. It was actually an issue they kind of had, a, a possible exploit that Alabama could have used to maybe beat them. But um, they had nine fumbles, and it was good for tied for top 66, which is honestly the, the bottom half of all FBS schools. So it's definitely something they want to clean up. And look, here's the deal. And I, I've said it before, and I'll keep saying it. If you win the turnover battle, like you have a better turnover margin than the team, 73% of the time you're going to win. 73% of the time you're going to win. So you have to have that going on at the running back room. The next thing that I want to talk about is pass catching. Now, this category is not necessary. Running backs rooms, you, you just have to have depth and be productive, which is a given. You got to protect the ball, but you have so much more lethal ability as a whole offense and system as a whole when your running backs have pass catching abilities. Proof. All right, so Oklahoma had their backs and they did about 10 to 12 attempts each passing. Now, I understand some offenses have different systems. Oklahoma's is a much more of an air raid. They don't do much passing and running as much as other teams. Bama had 20 for each of their backs. I mean, Bama was just all over, and that's kind of what you might expect from Miami. And they were able to use this to really throw off defenses. Imagine if you're a defense, you're like, okay, great. So they have really good wide receivers. Um, they have a running back that can run up the gut. They have a quarterback that's a dual threat. He also can run it. Oh, and by the way, the running backs might be able to catch some passes too. I mean, you're just going to be scrambling running all over. You don't know what's going on. It's a lot more difficult. Take also the NFL, for example. I mean, we've seen what the Saints did with Kamara. And then we've seen Le'Veon Bell and what he was able to do at the Steelers and his abilities. And by the way, kudos to Duke Johnson at Cleveland Browns. That was the, one of the things that we really brought to the team that was really used and utilized as pass catching ability. It's part of a system, I understand, but if your running back is able to do it, it really gives you an edge on offense. Now, what does Miami have? This is all fun and great and cool, Anton, but what does Miami do uh, to apply these traits for their team? Do they have depth? At running back, most definitely. Yes, finally. I mean, this year, it's just, it's stacked. You got DJ Dallas, Cameron Davis, Lingard, Asa Martin transfer, and there's still Robert Burns and other athletes that are coming up. Miami has plenty of depth at running back. It's not a room for concern, finally. And I think they'll definitely be very, very impactful coming up this season in the running back room and have enough to what it takes to win a national championship considering their running back room. Now, the second part is protect the ball. Last year, oh, big no. So it's a big if for Miami coming in this year. We did not protect the ball. Miami had 12 freaking fumbles last year. That's good for almost dead last in the whole country. I mean, we we're just, it, it was bad. We we're not doing well. That was back when we had Thomas Brown as a running backs coach. Not all those fumbles, by the way, are running backs, but as, as a whole team, it's just not good. Not good at all. Eric Kickson is a new running backs coach for Miami. We'll see who he brings to the table. He's not a big name, but I really want him to clean that up and make sure we don't fumble as much because both Dallas and Homer had some issues with that. We'll see how that goes. And it does depend on the, you know, O-line and if 
you know, some quarterback's getting blown up. He's going to fumble it. We'll see how that goes on there. Last part is not necessary, but lethal if you're able to do this pass catching. Does Miami have it? Well, we kind of tried doing it last year with 19 and 10 attempts per running back. It was in the system, and Rick tried to do it, but we know how awful that whole system was and just detrimental. I think it's possible that Danny Nose might do some of that. With backs that are so tall, actually, Lingard being six foot and Asa Martin 5'11", you can catch the ball really well and use your frame and get some hops going as long as you have sure-handed hands. So I'm curious to see if Miami does this. We do have that potential ability. It's not proven yet. We'll see. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button. Join an exciting college football community with Canes in Focus. I really appreciate it and ask you guys to do one thing. If you ever do any shopping on Amazon, could you do one thing for me? Any of my videos, you just go down there in the description, click on any of these affiliate links. You don't have to buy the product that's in the link, but you can. Any product that you look up on Amazon, heck, if you want to look, Miami versus Florida Gators, see this book right here, and I wanted to buy it. Bam, if you buy it, a small percentage revenue goes to me. It helps out. 100% of that revenue is going to go to the channel quality, improvements on all levels of all sorts. I'd greatly appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Guys. Clash football is a fun and crazy world. It is so tough and tight to see who's got the best athletic team, which is great when you got athletes all around. But it does not matter because at the end of the day, it's always all about the youth.